And did you know that if it's over 10 minutes long, you can add a second um, ad in the middle of the video and make twice as much money? I saw that on um, Shelby Church's I don't want to do that though, because I think people think I'm a sellout. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm here with Emily, um, and we thought we'd do a video kind of all about some tips and tricks and a bit of a guide for apartment hunting and how to find either your first apartment or if you're moving and you just kind of need some advice. Because moving out of res like to your first apartment is a decent transition, and we went through it all last year, and so we feel like we have a pretty good grasp on kind of some ideas what to look for what to do what not to do so elena myself and cordelia just signed our apartment for next year so we're not keeping the bitch box um which is what we call apartment now just because of exchanges and everything all of our roommates got along fine but yeah, you know just logistically it wasn't working out to keep five and we have some advice for you so the first step is the websites to start looking for apartments it can be pretty intimidating kind of having nowhere to start a couple great places to start are the mcgill off-campus housing facebook group actually um People are going to post apartment listings and like sublet listings as well for apartments mostly in the Plateau and McGill ghetto for McGill students, which is a great resource. I suppose um, if you want to live with other people but you don't like have roommates, you can usually find someone looking for a roommate or someone who just also is in the same situation. Zumper is a good one that I've used, well we've used to look at things. That and Padmapper I think are the biggest ones that landlords use like in the McGill ghetto. Yeah. So Padmapper.com and Zumper.com. You can search by like bedrooms and price, which is really nice. I like websites like that that show a map yeah. because that can be really helpful to visualize where you want to live. There's two specific areas that McGill students kind of live and that's the plateau and the ghetto. The ghetto is the area like from Avenue de Pont and like university and kind of in this square right next to McGill's campus and the plateau is a little bit farther out. It kind of stretches up around like Saint Laurent and Saint Urbain. So about half our friends live in the plateau and then about half of our friends live in the ghetto. And there's definitely pros and cons to both. Do you wanna start with the ghetto? Yeah, so you love the ghetto. Yeah, I love living here. So the really nice thing about being close to campus is that you don't have to walk and you can go home between your classes for lunch mm -hmm. or if you forget your lab coat, which a lot of my friends have done. Like I have a friend who like forgot her Just lab coat. Science girl thing. Yes. <laughs> it's where like more partying is happening. There are families, but it's a way more like student-y vibe, which is also a downside because there's like yeah. garbage everywhere and stuff. The pros to the plateau, um, I love the plateau. It feels more French. It feels a little more like authentic Montreal kind of neighborhood. Um, there's a lot more like restaurants and kind of things out there on Saint Laurent. Like you're really close to clubs and kind of places like that. But like Emily said, it's very far. Um, it's like a 20 to 30 minute walk from campus depending on where you are. And while it can be less expensive than the ghetto, there's kind of a lot of other things like some rooms may not have a window, like some houses experience problems with like theft, mice, like they're older buildings. So it's just kind of a different vibe. The houses in the ghetto are pretty much all the time more expensive. Um, but they're often like we have like security cameras and like a whole front entryway type of thing and it's it's more built for students so it's a little bit more like secured by it the way it feels very safe and not that there aren't places in the ghetto and the plateau that are like safe and unsafe but just kind of on average the feel of the area like there's more robberies and thefts in like the greater plateau area there's kind of depending on where in the plateau you live it's a really different feel like if you live north of of De Pine, it's a really different vibe than living like between Sherbrooke oh, sure and Pine. Yeah. yeah, because it's still very McGill. Like, Pine yeah. and Sherbrooke. Yeah, that's the lower plateau area. That's a really, I mean, that's like the area I like a lot because it's kind of like right in the middle of the two. But so. if you live like way up, like even past like where you guys live, like because people live like out there, like on a day like today where it's negative 25 degrees with the wind chill, like it can be very hard to drag yourself to class. I think I'm the only one of our friends who went to class today. Why? I went to the gym. Yeah, maybe it was 7 a.m. So that's why websites with maps are nice to kind of visualize where exactly you're going to be. Craigslist is another one that has a map and can often have some postings, although I've found they just don't have crossover in the selection. Like you'll find ones on Zumper and Padmapper that like aren't even listed on Craigslist at all. And I'll find just kind of like some random ones on Craigslist. So definitely have multiple tabs open and don't limit yourself to just one website. You can also use Kijiji. Um, it's, that one's okay. That one, I find it a little bit harder to navigate because they have a ton of listings for like all of Montreal. I think it, I think it's harder to specify like Milton Park. You can kind of specify like a five kilometer radius. So it's like, it's a little harder to use, but um, it's still like a decent, a decent resource. And then you don't even really have to go online. I think a lot of times the best apartments never get posted online at all. The two best ways I think to find apartments if you're really proactive is one, if you have any friends or just like know someone graduate, who's moving out, ask if you can see their apartment and if ask if they like their landlord and just get in touch with the landlord. The other thing you can do, which um, 
like my boyfriend and like their house is doing is you can just walk down streets that you kind of want to live on and there will be signs with like numbers posted to call if you're interested in living there and it'll even say like how many bedrooms our apartment was only actually like on the market for a day someone that knew macy like contacted her asked to see it asked to see our landlords before it was even like posted anywhere publicly and they like got it the next day mm -hmm. so like if you have ins like that it can be really helpful so definitely ask your upper year friends but i also wouldn't panic about getting it done super early it really like don't stress if you're not finding anything in january it's okay like february march like people things are still getting continuously posted especially if you're living with i'd say less than four people i'd say houses of like four and up tend to be posted earlier because yeah, so kind of kind of grab yeah, those. yeah but if you're living with two or three people like there's gonna be apartments mm -hmm. posted like a week before yeah school especially like apartment buildings that's another thing about quebec real estate is that in the plateau more so but in the ghetto as well um legally you're not allowed to list a room as a bedroom if it doesn't have a window but that is just completely not the case we were looking for five in the plateau we had two or five bedrooms they advertised five bedrooms and we go in and one is like a windowless room connected to another through either like a french door or like upper thing guys <laughs> my room has a fake window so yeah like, and Lenny lives in the plateau. I live in the plateau. It's actually a really nice place, but the thing is, it's like the window into the bedroom next to mine. So yeah. I'm kind of just like, like it does get natural light, I guess, if my <laughs> like roommate through. opens her front window. Hard Try to and Nick have a glass frosted French door. Which is even worse. I would have a really open conversation with your roommates saying, hey, does anyone feel comfortable living in a room without a window? Because sometimes someone might be, yeah, that's fine with me. But some people might like us be like absolutely not there's not a chance in the world that isn't all apartments that's just something to be worried of for bigger groups ghetto is usually the way to go just because apartments are smaller in the plateau but you can if you look and you're patient you can probably find whatever you're looking for now getting into some apartments that we liked and we viewed but we didn't end up getting so i'm just gonna i have them on my phone i'm gonna put them on the screen we're gonna, we're gonna put them right, oh my God. We're gonna put them right here so the first apartment was a three bedroom apartment in the plateau and as you can see the outside of the building was nice um and it had kind of wood floors throughout the walls were white it had like a nice natural wood there's definitely some bedrooms with some sizable windows and it's kind of that like classic old plateau kind of vibe kind of feel but the kitchen was a bit dated <laughs> um, counter space was minimal it looked a little run down a little small bathroom looked good bathroom looked fine there was a little outdoor space which is always kind of nice um but ultimately it was a bit small and we weren't sure we didn't actually tour this one we weren't sure if every room had a window um, and there wasn't really a nice cohesive living space which is something that we like care about a lot so we ended up not going with that one okay so the next one we saw on zumper we didn't even go look at it it looked pretty nice but it was furnished and oftentimes apartments like this they'll show like the same pictures for every unit like we, i noticed like this one had similar pictures on different addresses yeah um but it honestly like didn't look that cute <laughs> like the um the living space was completely disconnected from any sort of yeah. kitchen but we had an unfurnished apartment originally so elena cordelia and i all have furniture and all of us really like our furniture and we spend money on it so we don't want to have to get rid of it after one year yeah so all That's furnished up. all furnished apartments were kind of immediately cut so this next apartment was actually pretty close to where we are now um, Wasn't it just like the same street? Pretty nice. There's a lot of good things about it. The lighting was really nice. Depending on what floor you're on, that's important to know. Higher up apartments, better lighting. Two of the rooms were like good size, pretty good lighting. The biggest room didn't really have a closet. Like it had a little thing, which was kind of weird. And then one room didn't have very good lighting. It had like an extra random like side room, side room that you could use as a closet, which is kind of nice. And then a good living space. The big thing that made it like not really an option was the kitchen was like not really usable at all. We'll show a picture. Yeah, we'll be showing pictures. That's why we're oh, that's okay. over here. But the kitchen was just like not usable at all. When we were visiting, the girls were like trying to build like a little table to like help like cut vegetables on. So that was like a really big like drawback. Like we love to like host dinner. Like Cordelia loves to have like people over. I love to just make my master chef vegan meals. I like to have at least this much counter space. Yeah. <laughs> the next one that I like the pictures, I love it by the pictures, but we didn't end up choosing it for kind of a strange reason. So this one was the same like lower plateau, but still in the Milton Park area. So maybe like a seven minute walk from school, very doable, really close to here and a great price. It had like nice white walls, a good amount of natural light, every like big windows in the living room, every single room had a window, except for the catch was that they were remodeling the living room to be the third room, meaning like virtually no living room, like at all, like just kind of like a walk-in vestibule type area, and then a very narrow kitchen with like no table. 
so there was not any room for like entertaining a dining room table like having our friends over for things like thanksgiving so that's why this one was like not an option even though everything else like yeah. kind of ticked all of our boxes that's another one where like depending on the group you are like a really there's a couple apartments around that that you save a lot of money if you're willing to get like a four and a half for three people because there's no living room but for us, that's just not a sacrifice. We like to make. love being yeah. hosts. We love having people over. So the final one that we like considered is another one in the Milton Park area. And this one was beautiful. It was a great price. This one had nice, good light, white walls, wood floors, kind of really solid structure, decent sized kitchen, decent sized living room. But again, the jarring issue with this one was that it came with all of the furniture, which, which we just can't have. Like that's not an option for us. Although like if you're a first year with no furniture, that might be like your dream come true. We kind of want that originally yeah so now that you've kind of seen the apartments that we were looking at and ultimately what we didn't choose and why we didn't choose them we wanted to kind of get into some more like do's and don'ts of apartments and what to kind of look for and ask your landlords while they're actually showing you the apartments you see when you're in the apartment you want to make sure you figure out the washer dryer situation so a lot of them have it in the unit which is really nice super convenient um a lot of times they're in the building if you have to go outside to get to the washer it makes it like a huge hassle to like bundle up Go outside, you have to carry your laundry Not down your you steps. You run out in your Birkenstocks and your shorts <laughs> and your t-shirt. Yeah. And you just hustle. Yeah, it's not the end of the world at Yeah, all. unless you have, like, children. I feel like if you had a kid, you would really want to, like, have your own washer dryer. Another important, like, what are those called? Assets. But, like, electronic things in your house that are big. What's it called? Those, like, a washer, a dryer, a fridge. Appliances. <laughs> Appliances. <laughs> Appliances in general are really important to look for. So you've got your washer dryer, um, dishwashers. There, it's nice to have them, but honestly, like Wendy, what was your experience not having a dishwasher? Honestly, you just learn to do your own dishes, yeah. and it's quick, and you don't even realize you're doing them until you're like, ah, oh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. my hands away. If it's a really small kitchen and no dishwasher, then you're gonna have nowhere to dry it, and it's a whole thing. But something really important is when you're looking at apartments, if tenants are there, like just. It's awkward, but pull one aside and say, how are your landlords? Because yeah. we've had, like, we did that, and one girl was honestly like, no, don't do it. They're bad. And, and then like, we're like, okay, yeah, we're not going to yeah. do it. And our landlords here, since we really like them, we're staying, like, we made sure to get an apartment that's still, like, yeah. A good apartment. landlord can really make or break your entire living experience. Your Great year, landlords honestly. make it fantastic. Bad landlords make it honestly awful. So now we kind of want to get into, like, how apartments are actually priced. So they're often going to be listed the price for the full thing, and then it's, oftentimes up to the roommates kind of divide it how they see fit so for example i believe our apartment is listed i'll give like an example amount this is not how much our apartment costs but let's say our apartment is five thousand dollars as like a nice easy number and there's five roommates it's not how much it costs yeah. there's five roommates we could each pay a thousand dollars each but say emily like doesn't have any money or whatever hypothetically <laughs> so she needs to pay like 900 someone else could pay like 1100 to like balance it off and kind of offset yeah so it, you kind of just like split up the room so like in our apartment the rooms are not all the same size some of them are quieter some of them get more noise so we we discussed it all together like how much each room would cost and then all came to a consensus about what everyone would have in the ghetto apartments are kind of anywhere from like I'd say lowest end is like seven fifty per person to upper end is like nine fifty a person. Yeah, even a thousand. Yeah, it can be, but like you don't have to have those. And yeah. like in the in the plateau, I'd say it's like bumped down maybe two hundred. Like lowest you can find is like five fifty. Upest you can find is like eight fifty seven. Five fifty is like that'd be really really, really good. low. Don't don't look for that. And eight hundred is like a little more expensive for the plateau. So it's a little bit less expensive plateau, a little bit more expensive in the ghetto. Those are the kind of the tips that we had for helping you hopefully look for apartments on your first steps out of res or if you're looking right now and then we're going to kind of show you the footage of our apartment and what we liked about it and stuff and kind of see all that so enjoy this is our apartment that we picked so it's a second floor walk up um there's three bedrooms all of them have a window um it's got exposed brick which is really nice and then what we liked about it most was this giant living space the living space and kitchen were both really nice, even bigger than our apartment now, which is excellent because we love to like have our friends over and everything. And they were connected, which was a big key. As you can see, like the kitchen goes right into the living room. The bathroom also had a bathtub. Which is really fancy. <laughs> very luxury for like a very normal price point. And a good amount of bathroom storage, yeah. which is also very key because it was a smaller bathroom. And every room had a closet, and then, except for Cordelia's, which had like kind of like a rack thing, which was still good. But all of the rooms were still a decent size. You could easily fit all of your stuff without a problem. So that's kind of why, like, it was the open concept living area, especially, as well as the fact that every room had a window and every room was, like, pretty sizable, that we ended up selecting that apartment. And our, it's our same landlords. That's actually probably the biggest pro. We kept our same landlords. Yes. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.